method of moments. To fit a K parameter distribution, we want to match the K sample of moments to the same K moments of the distribution you're fitting. Okay, this is pretty easy, so I'm just going to go ahead and do an example. For a sample of 10 medical claims, we have the following. The sum of all the XIs equals 3,860. The sum of all the XIs squared equals 4,574,802. Claims are assumed. to follow a log normal distribution. With parameters mu and sigma. We are going to estimate mu and sigma using method of moments. Okay. So first we need to find the first and second empirical moments. In order to find these, we can simply divide 300 or 3,860 by the number of medical claims, which is 10, to get an average. And we can do the same thing for the sum of all the XIs. Now we can oh wait. now we are going to set these equal to the first and second moments used for a log normal distribution found in your tables. So that formula, expected value of x to the k equals e to the k mu plus k squared times one half. So then we can set 386 equal e to the mu plus sigma squared times one half. 457,480.2 equals e to the two mu plus two sigma squared times one half. Then if you take the natural log of both sides, you get 5.9558 equals mu plus one half sigma squared and 13.0335 equals two mu plus one half sigma squared times two. Then you can just solve to get mu equals 5.3949 and sigma squared equals 1.1218. Now that you've found the two parameters, you can use them to plug into any equations in the um, tables to find whatever you might need. So now we're going to talk about percentile matching. And the process that we're going to use for this procedure is really similar to the one that Kira just showed you when she talked about method of moments. So our goal for most of these problems is as follows. And this is what you're usually going to be doing for percentile matching problems. Okay, so our goal is to estimate the parameters of a distribution using values from the underlying distribution. Okay, and now let's consider a sample problem. Okay. 
problem one here, we're given that there's a random sample of claims drawn from a Burr distribution with known parameter alpha equals one and unknown parameters theta and gamma. We're given that 75% of the claim amounts in the sample are greater than 100, and 25% are greater than 500. We want to estimate theta by percentile matching. So before we get into solving the problem, we should think about the definition of a percentile. So the definition here is from Klugman and his friends, and it says that the 100p th percentile of our random variable x is any value of pi sub p such that the CDF evaluated at pi sub p approaching from the left side is less than or equal to p, which is self less than or equal to the value of the CDF evaluated at pi sub p. Okay, so now let's discuss the solution. Okay, so let's solve that problem. We know that the underlying distribution is a Burr distribution. So from the tables, we know what the CDF is. We have that f of x is equal to 1 minus the quantity 1 over 1 plus x over theta, quantity raised to the gamma, all raised to the alpha. Okay, remember that our givens are framed in terms of the survival function, so now we need to consider what s of x is. So we subtract the CDF from 1. To get that, our survival function for the Burr distribution is 1 minus 1 plus x over theta to the gamma raised to the alpha. And then for us, alpha is equal to 1, so s of x is just 1 over 1 plus x over theta to the gamma. Okay, so let's set up our system of equations. We have the following. We have that 25% of our values are greater than 500, which means that S of 500 is equal to 0.25, which means that 0.25 is equal to 1 over 1 plus 500 over theta to the gamma. Similarly, we have that S of 100, again by our givens, is equal to 0.75, which is 1 over 1 plus 100 over theta raised to the gamma. And this is a system of equations which you can solve using your techniques that you learned in high school. And what we get is that theta is about equal to 223. And we're done. We've handed out to you you're going to see um, something about empirically smoothed estimates. And you're going to use this technique whenever you're given discrete data points and ask to find percentiles of values that lie between those data points. So look this up when you have more time on your own. It's again in the notes that we gave you on page one on the bottom. So the likelihood function of x is going to be the product of the probability of each value of x given, because you're going to have some no, you know, values that you know because it's an estimate, um, given this whatever value of theta or whatever variable, parameter, sorry. Um, and then typically the pxi is going to be, you know, just a little f of x. There might be one minus big f of x. We have some max value. Um, so you get this, then you take the log, natural log of it, and then you take the derivative with respect to the parameters and solve for the parameter. Um, if you have multiple parameters, you repeat, but with um, you know different parameters for each derivative, um, then solve the systems the system of equations. Uh, okay, so. 
here's a problem. Um, you're given the values 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, and 5. You have a maximum of 5. Um, and you have the equation little f of x equals alpha divided by x of theta plus 1. What is alpha? Okay, so first to solve this, um, we'll need to take the integral of this in order to obtain kappa f of x because uh, these are the max value. Um, so integral 1 to x of alpha t It's pretty simple and equal to solve. It's just going to be negative t and negative alpha from 1 to x, which is 1 minus x to the negative alpha. Um, so then, as I mentioned here, it's 1 minus f of x um, for max. So it'll just be 1 minus this, and, which is just. So what we wind up getting um, is alpha, no, that's too small, alpha cubed times 2 times 3 times 4 to the alpha minus negative alpha plus 1 times 5 negative alpha squared, which uh, can be simplified for when we take the log to times 24 to 1. Uh, okay, so then we take the natural log, which will give us 3L in alpha minus alpha L in 600 minus L in 24. Then we take the derivative. Um, and we take the derivative, which is 3, sorry, 3 over alpha minus L in 600, and this bit just disappears. We have to set it all equal to zero. Solve for alpha. We get alpha equals 3 divided by ln 600, which is 0 0.46897. All right, and that's how you solve that.